so yeah, mine's a really interesting story and there's a lot to learn from it. So I explained I was, you know, my original background was Goldman Sachs. Uh, I started around the hedge fund sales business and equities and equity derivatives, then ran a global macro hedge fund, trading everything in the world, then started writing macroeconomic research from the Mediterranean coast in Spain for all the biggest hedge funds, sovereign wealth funds, family offices, that kind of stuff. Um, went through the financial crisis and the European crisis. And that's when I was trying to start this bank. A friend of mine, Emil Woods, tapped me on the shoulder and said, have you looked at Bitcoin? I looked at Bitcoin. I got it immediately and wrote the first ever macroeconomic strategy piece on Bitcoin and how to value it back in 2013. And I bought it at 200 bucks. It then, and, I, and then I, in the piece, I said, listen, if I value it in the same way gold stock to flow is valued, then Bitcoin with gold at 1300, I think it was at the time, then Bitcoin's worth a million bucks. And it's a $200. So I said, okay, look, let's assume I, I'm a complete moron and I need to discount myself by 90%. So at $100,000 fair value versus a $200 price, I said, this is the best risk reward we will ever be given in our entire careers. And so I bought it, as did a bunch of other people, saw that article, got passed around a lot. It then went up 5x in three months. And I'm clearly now thinking I'm George Soros, maybe Julian Robertson, maybe Paul Tudor Jones, all rolled into one huge ego. Um, and um, it then falls 87.5%. But my time horizon, I said, it's a call option, but it's got an unlimited time horizon, but my time horizon is five to 10 years. So I'm happy and I don't really care what happens to it. Fine. And I sized it appropriately. So I held it, went all the way down, kind of kept off my screen, didn't really care about it. Then it starts crawling back up again. And I've, we're following a real vision and educating people and talking about it. So it's not like it, I wasn't interested. But then it gets the big run up in 2017 and the forking wars happened. And people were forking the Bitcoin chain. I'm like, what the fuck does this mean? Am I going to back the wrong chain? I don't know. I don't understand it well enough. So I took profits at about 2000. I've made 10 times my money. I had broken my rule, which was uh, I was actually in this for a longer term time horizon. So I didn't trade my strategy because I got confused on the route. Anyway, 10x, I'm like, I'm super happy. It goes up another 10x. I'm like, I don't really care. You know, I've made 10x in a trade. By anybody's standards, that was a great trade. I then wait, follow it, get involved in it, educate people, all of this stuff. Then m April 2020 comes along and I load up the boat. And it was my biggest bet ever made, put it into that, pretty much nail it. It goes up, great. I then recently went back and thought, how did I do? Because, you know, I, I bought it low, I sold it high, and I bought it in a sell-off. And I went back and thought, why not if I just kept my original bet, which was much smaller, and just held on? I'd have done 20, I would have done five times better. I'm like, holy shit. Because none of us, we're so used to cyclicality. We don't think of exponentiality. And because I I bought it at 200, sold it at 2,000, bought it again at 6,500. I'm like, you moron. Then I figured out, okay, I know what you should do in the cyclical asset that goes on a secular uptrend. You should buy it every time it gets to the sell-offs. We know this. So I figured out if I just added the same amount as my original bet, every time it got to that, the bottom of the cycle. And I assumed that I would miss the bottom of the cycle by 40% because I'm a moron. I would have made 25 times as much money. But that's now your strategy, I assume. That's entirely my strategy because I know how this plays out with these longer term assets. So I don't trade, I don't trade it at all. Yes, I've made you know, the biggest switch I made was when I sold most of my Bitcoin and bought ETH back in whenever that was, 2021. Um, and other than that, I have a few positions and occasionally I'll reweight, but I just don't trade it because I just think I've never found anybody who's made as much money trading cryptocurrency as, the, as they have done holding it. Hello and welcome to Crypto Street. In today's video, Real Vision CEO Raul Pal gives us an update about his outlook for the economy in 2023 and the future of crypto. There's no damage once you come to terms with it. 
you kind of look forward to weak prices because you can buy more because of the what I talked about. But the problem is, is the people who want to get rich quick. And they're the people who get wrecked. They're the people who get angry. They're the people because their time horizon. This is the great piece of advice Paul Shooter Jones gave me, which is the best traders in the world's time horizon of their investment matches their idea horizon. A lot of people say, oh, there's going to be a, you know, I think the Fed are going to cut rates 100 basis points next year and they trade a one week trade. It's like you're not trading your view. You're trading a one week time horizon view. Um, and so with crypto, you just need to ask yourself, what is my view? How long does this play out? If you say, well, it's going to play out over 10 years, well, then you shouldn't change your bet over 10 years except add to it unless something fundamentally changes. And fundamental changes are not price changes. So I am on the... I'm on the desk and I'm a macro guy, but the big swinging dick salesman from Morgan Stanley, who's like the best equity derivative salesman in the world, everybody at the hedge fund kind of worship him, asked to speak to me because he knows I'm new. He's like, I've got this great idea. And it's like long semiconductors, short the NASDAQ, but I have no understanding of this. I've only recently gone into technology. I no so I'm like, yeah, this sounds like an amazing bet. And so I put it on in way too big a size because I wanted to sound like the big guy because I want to write big tickets. I lost $2 million, which is about 1% of my book. Uh, two, no, I think my book then was like 50 million or so. So it was a decent loss in 24 hours. My boss looked at me and goes, what the fuck were you doing? I was like, hmm. So I learned that lesson. Um, I learned trying over trading. So 2004 was not a good year for me because I was trying to push a narrative and it was a sloppy year for assets. They kind of didn't go anywhere. And I tried to push a narrative. And when you push a narrative uh, and you trade around it, you'll lose money. So, because you tend to go too big and then you get stopped out and too big, it just doesn't work. I went back and looked at it recently and I realized that most of the key trends I was going for played out the following years and the years after but that year was a disaster for me. Um, then the other one was at writing Global Macro Investor. And this is the mistake I see people making today and they made in 2020. So Global Macro Investor nailed 2006, 2007, 8. 2009, all of my indicators, all of the work I do on the macro was turning up. And I'm like, no, 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 no. They don't understand the world's gonna collapse and everything's gonna roll over again. So I overruled all of my homework with my emotions, kind of what I wanted it to be, not what it was. And I remained short all the way up, basically, lost a fortune and completely screwed up my mental state because I had not accepted my actual homework and then fought my own narrative. And I learned that. So in 2020, I was very cognizant of making that mistake again. So 2020, I got a bunch of weekly DMARC indicators on tons of assets um, around March or April, and I closed out everything. And I said, look, you know, I thought there was another solvency leg, insolvency leg to come lower, but I didn't trade it because I didn't have any confirmation. And then all of my models started turning higher because of the liquidity. And the Fed basically said, no, 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 that insolvency stuff, never going to happen. No collateral is going to go bust in this environment. And I saw a lot of people getting really bearish at the bottom based on that motion, and they're doing it right now. God, everybody wants the market to crash. They really want the equity market to crash. Half of the crypto market still wants it to crash. They want it to crash because they want to prove the authorities wrong, or they want to prove that monetary policy is bad, or they want to prove that inflation is here. For they want to prove doom porn and doom porn is the way to the poor house so yeah so that was a lesson that, that's probably the best lesson i've ever learned is don't get caught up by doom porn if you're gonna bad things happen you can make a ton of money from them so is it a good time to invest in crypto tell us in the comments also don't forget to like and subscribe see you soon with the next video thank you so much for watching